Hello everyone, Mucklug Douglas Bartholomew Reginald Esquire the fourth here, and this is a one-step guide to entering fractals. The first chunk of this guide is explaining the basics of fractals, after which are time-stamped explanations for every stinking one of them. So bookmark this video, and when you are doing any fractal on the list, jump straight to that timestamp to get an explanation on how to do it in 30 to 60 seconds on average. Now, fractals are similar to dungeons in that they are five-man PvE content. There are 100 levels of fractals and each day they get different buffs and debuffs which modify the fights in some way in order to keep things spicy. The higher level fractals also have challenge modes, which are severely more, well, challenging, but have much more rewards. The first fractals are scaled so that fresh level 80 characters in yellow and orange gear can do them, while the highest level of fractals are made for people in full ascended. You can get full ascended gear from fractals, but the drop chance increases considerably the higher up you go. You also get quite a bit of gold doing them. I use usually get 10 to 20 gold doing just three fractals, the tier 4 dailies in my case, each day. If I were consistently doing challenge modes, it would be even higher. To enter the fractal lobby, go to Lion's Arch and go to this location. Step through the large red portal and you will get a map selection pop-up. For the moment, just click enter at the bottom to step into the Fractals of the Mist, which is basically the lobby for the fractal room. You'll see a cinematic if you haven't been here before. To our left is the scale setting sequencer. This is the reason I told you it didn't matter what map you had selected when you step through the portal because you can change it. Here. The fractals are divided by tiers 1, 2, 3, and 4. Each tier consists of 25 fractals. For example, tier 4 is fractals 76 through 100. Tier 1 fractals have no modifiers, tier 2 has one modifier, tier 3 has two modifiers, and tier 4 has three modifiers each day. What do I mean by modifier? As mentioned earlier, there are various buffs and debuffs that keep things spicy in fractals, also called instabilities. Some of them are hardly noticeable, like Sugar Rush speeds up players and enemies by a small amount. Others are very noticeable, such as social awkwardness where players can push one another. Thought you dodged that red circle on the ground? Nope, Bob pushed you back into it. Thanks, Bob. To see what any modifier does, just mouse over it in the top right corner or read it in this panel. At the start, you will not be able to select many maps. That is because of your personal fractal level located in the top right corner. Here's how it works. Your personal fractal level increases by 1 for every fractal you do that is your level or higher. So if your personal fractal level is 5, doing fractal 1 won't raise your level, but doing fractal 100, oh god, why would you do that, would raise your level. It will go up by 1 each time you raise it, no matter what fractal you are doing. If your personal fractal level is the highest in the party, you can queue for any fractal that is your level plus 1. So using the same example, if your personal level is 5, you can queue for anything between 1 and 6. Note, if you are in a party with someone with a higher level than you, you can join them in any fractal and your level will benefit from it. That's how you can possibly have a level 5 doing a 100. Once you've chosen which fractal to do, select it, click OK, and step into the beam of light in the center of the room here. Once everyone hits it they are ready, you're off. Now, there are a few bits of information for every fractal that can make it a lot easier. The basic rules of Guild Wars 2, stand in green circles, avoid the red circles, if you are the red circle, get away from me will get you through most content, but each fractal has a few niche mechanics that can be summed up pretty quickly and will make your group wipe a lot less if you understand these. However, before I go into a 1980s montage of fractal information, let me show you the rest of the lobby before we leave. After Fractal 19, a mechanic called Agony will show up. Agony is a debuff you will get when hit by certain attacks and fractals. If you get Agony, you take damage and get 75% reduced healing received for a few seconds. With a fractal that has Agony in it selected, a sample platter of Agony will spawn over there. Standing in it gives you a taste of how much damage the Agony will do to you. If the Fractal recommends 8 Agony Resist, and you have 8 or more Agony Resist, it will hardly hurt you, and it can be reduced down to 1% damage. If you have less than the recommended, it will hurt far more. Mmm, tastes like strawberries. How to get more Agony Resistance. Agony Resist is the primary method of gating players from skipping from Fractal 1 straight to 100. Ascended Gear, that's the pink colored text, has infusion slots on it. You can put an Agony Infusion into those sockets 
sockets to increase your resistance. Rarely, you can get exotic gear with infusion socks also. Note, there are recipes to add additional sockets to certain items. For example, Ascended Rings can get up to three infusion slots after upgrading them. Where to get infusions? You will often receive plus one agony infusions as loot in fractals. If you take them over this way, uh, this is a teleporter right here, or you can jump, and talk to the pink robot, you can trade lower tier infusions for higher ones. One of your goals should be to get a plus nine infusion in every slot. If you have full ascended gear with plus nine agony resist in every slot, you will have over 150 agony resist, which is enough to do all 100 fractals. You can upgrade them even higher later on to have an even easier time. Is your agony resistance just short of what you need that day? Visit the potion setup over here. The first item on the list, which is heavily discounted the first few times you buy it, temporarily increases your AR. Now, when you are choosing a fractal to do, you will see purple markers next to some of them. Those are either the dailies or the recommendeds. The dailies will give a lot of gold profit, the recs will give a lot of currencies used in the fractal room itself, and some free potions. If you do the daily on a higher tier, you get the rewards from all the tiers below it. For example, if you do a daily on tier 4, you will get credit for doing it on 1, 2, 3, and 4, thus getting 4 extra treasure chests at the end of the fractal. This is why doing 3 tier 4 fractal dailies is nearly equivalent to doing 15 tier 1 non-dailies. Now, occasionally in your fractal loot you will get a fractal encryption, it's like a box, and fractal encryption keys. Open the boxes with the keys for all kinds of materials, ascended stuff, and gray items that are worth a lot of gold. This is where most of the gold comes from. If you have extra boxes, go to the blue robot over here and buy some deeply discounted fractal keys. Never buy more than 30 in a day because the price shoots up after that. If you somehow have a ton of extra keys, you can buy more encryption boxes from other players on the market. However, it is not profitable to buy both the keys and the boxes both just by the one that you're missing. Also, there is a jump puzzle in here. It starts there and it ends up there. Good luck with that. There's a few other things in here. Laurel's Merchant, Bank, Trading Post, Practice Golem, etc. Standard stuff. This here is a Mist Lock Singularity. Once you have finished your Fractal Attunement Masteries, it gives you a buff. For the most part, you just slap that sucker whenever you run past one in a Fractal once you have the Attunement. Okay, time for the knowledge bomb. I firmly believe that each fractal can be explained in less than 60 seconds or so with visual aids, and while I could make a separate video for every one of them, that seems silly. So, what I'm going to do is hit you with everything here. If you want information on one in particular, look at the timestamps. Here we freaking go! Volcanic. In the first room, you will get ambushed on all sides. Hug the right wall and step up onto the ramp. This forces the enemies to all attack you from one direction. If someone wants to fight in the middle of the room, res that person when you're done. Finish killing the monsters, follow the boulders, don't get squished. First boss, don't let the enemies reach the hostages, pick up the infused stones on the ground, throw them at the boss on the throne to remove his invulnerability. Once his shields are down, he will attack. If everyone stands under the throne, he will lose line of sight and will come down so you don't have to fight him up on the cliff. Once he's dead, most groups will take a shortcut. Instead of going down the nice safe hallway to the right, most groups leap into the lava. As long as one person makes it across, you will unlock the checkpoint. Have everyone type slash GG, that kills you, and you will respawn above this spot. Jump back down together. Stay moving on this island. If you hold still, you burn. Hit boss, interrupt break bars. When he gets the big shield bubble, you have to hit him a number of times to break the bubble. Interrupt him right afterward and also deal with all the ads in quick succession. This will happen a few times during the fight. Ads will try to root you, which will cause you to burn because you can't move. Uncategorized. Jump up the platforms, kill or run past the bird girls. Attacking the doohickey releases four prisoners. Kill the Monty Python rabbit first, then the human woman who drops bombs, then the two Ettons in any order. Kill or run past the harpies, run up the hill while playing dodgeball. When three people click the three buttons at the top of it, it disables dodgeball for the last two slackers. Old Tom has a mechanic where people pick up batteries to turn on the fans to vent the poisonous gas out of the room, and no one does that. Just stack up on him and burn him down. Tank and spank, baby. Jump up the platforms, kill the bird girls. If someone is good at jumping and rushes to the end, then the others can slash GG to teleport to them. You're at the final boss. Four robots, one at a time, then all four robots at once. The guy in the bubble will shoot at you with his gun the entire time. Necros can summon a flesh worm right on top of the bubble to stop the bullets, or you can use overpowered guardian bubbles to stop them for a time, making the fight much easier. 
Snowblind. Run up to the fire pit, use your special action button to light the fire. Hotkey this if you don't have it hotkeyed. Pick up wood piles and throw them on the fire. You take increasing hypothermia damage when you aren't feeling toasty. So don't stay away too long. Once the fire's been lit long enough, it will melt the wall. First boss. Pick up wood, light the five fires to weaken it, kill the elemental. It will occasionally try to put out the fires. Shield them or relight them afterwards. If all five go out, it will make a snowstorm that makes it hard to see for a few seconds and teleports you randomly. Run southeast from the ice boss. The path then curves east, then north. Run towards the red map marker. Skip all the trash mobs. They do not deserve your valuable time. You're at the final boss. Lots of circles to dodge, but if you fail to dodge, you may get frozen solid. Teammates must break the ice to free you. Just keep avoiding red circles and hitting anything with a hit point bar until the loot shows up. Simple. Urban Battleground. You're a cat now! First fight in this fractal is the hardest part. Most groups run straight to the boss and kill all 50 mobs at once. Most groups die! Hug the right wall, kill enemies in small packs until you're in range of the siege equipment. Then charge. Watch out for the lava buckets above the boss. Prioritize hitting anything other than the boss. Every small enemy you kill reduces the damage the group is taking, making the fight easier. Kill her last, then the door. The path you need to take changes each day. Look for the path which does not have sandbags preventing passage. Keep going down the streets that are not blocked and you will eventually reach the final boss room. Use the nearest statue or tree to line of sight the siege machines. Pull over the humanoids and fight them. Once you've cleared them, charge the siege and kill it. Once you own the middle of the room, waves of enemies will come from each door, starting at the north and going clockwise. Finally, the boss runs out after the spirit bomb goes off. Boss has meteor rain, move out of it if it hurts too much, summons adds, and his biggest attack does damage in a line. So don't stand behind an ally, that way only one of you gets hit at a time by this. Swampland. First large room has bear traps and trip wires. They respawn, so don't bother trying to clear them. Once you've reached the door and the three wisp clefts at the south, three wisps will spawn around the map. Send at least one person to each of them. Once you pick up the first one, a timer starts, so do a countdown in chat. Once you pick it up, the terrain can change, so get back using any speed and teleport skills you have and turn in all the wisps before the timer runs out to open the door. Kill your way to the next large room for the final boss. Pick up the wisp and plug it in to start the fight. Enemies can only be hurt when they're in the green circles, so bait them into those circles. Occasionally, the green circle will move, so you will need to move as well. At near 20%, he will spawn four wisps around the room. Everyone will need to grab a wisp and carry it to the nearest cleft. Once all four are plugged in, you can finally fight the boss to the death. Cliffside. That big boy there is a prisoner, and we're gonna free him. Kill the enemies and steal the hammer. Once you pick up the hammer, you get an icon above your head that goes yellow, orange, red, ow! So you will have to drop it and hand it to someone else periodically. When wielding the hammer, the one button will steal the soul of whoever you're bopping, and the four button will expend the soul to break one of the seals. Climb your way up, steal souls, break seals holding the giant. There are two sections with traps that will try to knock you off the cliff. Be patient at these points. Additionally, once one person gets past the trap sections, they can disable the traps by clicking on the chains on the wall. Once you get to the arm shackles, you will have to alternate back and forth between the left and right arm until both are broken. When you're at the final boss, he will steal the hammer. As you beat on him, he will occasionally drop it. Pick it up, steal a soul from one of the ads, and hit the seal. Repeat. Do this enough times and you free the giant. If you get thrown into a cage, just attack your way out. You can break the cage. Aquatic Ruins has two different versions. Both start and end the same, but they have a different middle. Swim toward the map markers, kill the baddies, free the prisoners. After freeing them all, there will be a passage to swim into. This is where there's a split. The first possibility is what I call the dolphin run. You have to swim a gauntlet without being able to fight. Read your abilities and swim toward those swirly looking things. Make your way to the map marker. Use your stealth skill when necessary when there's too many crate. Once you get through the blue portal, you will be normal again. Fight your way to the next map marker. The room with the giant jellyfish is the final boss. The other possible path you may have had is the darkness path. Pick up the luminous plants. They decay quickly, so constantly grab a new one at every opportunity. Run to the next one. You die rapidly when in the darkness with no light. Remember, you can use dodge rolls for a boost of speed during this part. 
Make your way from plant to plant and kill what is necessary. At the end, you will reach the same boss jellyfish room. The jellyfish will spin to pull you in, occasionally you will grab one person and that person will have to hit a certain key to break free, and three times during the fight he will summon adds that make him invulnerable. Kill the adds, then come back to the boss. If bubbles hit you, they carry you to the ceiling. The electric cages hurt. Underground facility. Drop down, run up the ramp, send one person up the path to the left. That person will stand on a button at the top, which will open this door. Everyone step through. One person go up the ramp to the right. The remaining three people run forward and wait at the next door. When the one person who went up the ramp to the right stands on the button at the top, both doors open. So the first person can catch up to your group of three, and now the four of you can enter the next room together. There is a button on the left and right of this room. Stand someone on each of those buttons to open the door behind you, allowing the right path guy to catch up to you. It will also reveal a console. Someone needs to interact with it while the two people on the buttons stay on the buttons. The last two people are guarding the control panel person. Once the panel is finally finished, the door to leave this room will open. Go up the ramp and the path splits. If it goes to the left, you have to pick up these laser cutters. Get through the gauntlet while taking zero damage or else the laser cutter breaks and use it to cut open the big door at the end. Repeat until finished. If the path went to the right, you have to pick up bombs, run through the smoke to stealth, run up the hallway, avoid the circles while you're stealthed, the straight lines are okay, and put the bombs in the pipe. Once you have nine bombs in the pipe, hit the detonator. The two paths will meet back up in this room. Kill this guy, his car will break the wall. Run through this hallway, you don't have to kill this stuff. At the end of the hall, follow the left wall up and around the catwalk. By the time you get to the far side of the room, all the mobs will have given up because they don't do cardio. Engage the boss, it will be an ice guy or a dredge robot, but the fights are basically the same. If you get the purple marker on your head, he's following you. Lure him underneath the lava buckets. Someone else in the group, run up and click the button to dump lava on the boss. Hit him for big damage, CC him when possible. When the lava debuff wears off, bring him to the next bucket. Do it again until he's dead. Molten Furnace. Follow the Foot Clan's drill machine. Whenever you hit the water cutters, take the side passage and destroy the blocked vents to remove the water wall. Do this repeatedly until you reach the end of the tunnel. Fight some stuff, wait on the water wall. This one's on a timer. Cross the lava or go around it to the final showdown. This fight can be summed up with fire bad, but here goes. Dodge the red circles, kill the mobs. Hit the metal zit in the middle of the room whenever possible. Jump over the shockwaves. Fire tornadoes will start forming and zoom across the room. Constantly turn your camera to watch them. Kill the mob, kill the zit, dodge the fire and the shockwaves. Final boss finally reveals himself. Get his hit points to zero, he will occasionally teleport around the room. Molten Boss. Kill, kill, kill. Whenever you get to this group, you can run over to the left and line of sight them behind this wall so that they funnel together. It's not required, but it is an option. Eventually clear this room, kill the big boy, hack your way to the end of the level, and there are two bosses. When you kill one, the other will fully heal, so don't bother trying to cleave them both down. Pick one, kill it, then kill the other. Don't stand in fire, jump over the shock waves, don't stand in the 100 mile per hour winds, and don't fall off the cliff. Deep Stone. Drop down, choose left or right, it doesn't matter. Let's go left. The lights hurt, get to the end of the puzzle. Two people stand on the buttons to disable the puzzle for the slowpokes. Fight the Electro Spider. Red circles are bad, the embroidered red circle is super bad. That one will pick you up in a tornado and drop you off the cliff. Dodge that thing at all costs. Kill the Electro Spooter and pick up the shiny ball. You're at the entrance. Give the ball to the crystal. This time we'll take the other path. Don't get pushed off by the wind. Make your way to the two buttons. Stand on them to turn off the wind. Hack your way through the spiders, kill the giant spooter, pick up the ball, give it to the rock. You now have a special action button that reveals invisible monsters. Use it to reveal this guy. Kill him, go through the middle door. Use the light to reveal floor tiles and make your way across this pit. Fight on an elevator, reach the final boss. If the floor is blinking, it's about to collapse. You can fix it with your light button. He will periodically teleport, follow him, build floor if necessary with the light. If he goes invincible in the middle of the room, prioritize killing spectral flames. They will power up his spirit bomb. If too many reaches him, he goes boom. Rinse and repeat this until he's dead. 
Note, if you see sparkles around the level, that's an invisible treasure chest. You can use the light on it to reveal it. Siren's Reef. Welcome to Pirates of the Caribbean. Kill your way across the beach until you reach the giant Sonic the Hedgehog. Watch the tail! Kill him until he runs. Use the cannon to destroy the mines. Kill the ghosts on the high ground. Have someone use the ghost cannon. Everyone else go down to fight. The boss will make mines that will one-hit KO you. It is the cannoneer's job to shoot the mines nearest the boss. Back away if you have to while waiting on the cannon's next shot. Kill him, move on. Eventually you will reach this small maze. If you hit the lights, you spawn abs. You need to carry three bags of cursed gold to the end of the maze. You get slower while carrying them, so throw them around. The bags are marked on the map. Once you've gotten all three bags to the treasure chest, pick up the chest and leave the maze. Place the box on that boat over there. Have some people use the cannons, the rest go get the chest again and bring it back. Kill this guy, don't let wind push you off the boat. The water is deadly. Cannons and treasure chest on the opposite side of the boat, same thing. Bring it back. Fight a cat with a gun. Run the red circles to the edge of the boat. The cone will daze you. Four ghost cannons spawn. Use them to defend the ship. One person is fighting on foot. Eventually, the captain spawns, final boss, and she has every mechanic you've seen so far. Stack in green circles. Run red circles out to the edge of the boat. Don't let the wind push you into the water. The cone will daze you. Don't let the ads build up. If you have trouble on this fight, focus the ads first. There is a finite number of them. For you Norns, that means they're not endless. Chaos. Oh look, it's Cliffside again. Nope, it's chaos. Buckle up because it's about to get weird. Kill the first group, go down the ramp, jump up the puzzle. Most people skip the robots. First boss is simple. Kill him. If he turns invulnerable, kill the ads. If you get a red circle, run it out, just like on the pirate ship. Repeat until he's dead. When he's dead, run past the anime protagonist, light the fires with your special action key. You can see the fires on your minimap. Once you light the last one, the wall melts and the final boss room is revealed. The boss's weapon swings go one, two, three, one, two, three. And every three is an area of effect daze. Step back for those if you're melee. If he gets an invulnerability shield, drag him over the damaging tiles to destroy the shield. When he gets an interrupt bar, either interrupt him or get back before he vacuums you in. Jump over the shockwaves and either ignore the ads or kill them, but know that they are there. Ether Blade. Swim past the mines, fight some scrubs, get through the blinky floor tiles. They will one-hit kill you, don't touch them. After blinky floor tiles, there is a button that turns them off for your teammates that kept touching them. Make your way up to Panic at the Disco, get to the control panel with the red gear above it and turn it off. Use the teleporter to reach the next room. Objective, survive. After you've killed most of the enemies, the doors will open. Finish the last of them off, talk to Ellen to teleport to the boss room. Kill all the enemies there while dodging laser, skip it. If you need to jump over a low beam, you can jump over the boxes to do so. Thalma Nova Reactor. Congratulations on getting to play the best race. Detonate the wall to step through to see a nuclear plant under attack. There's a list of things you need to do that can be done in any order, but this is what most groups will do. Go to the middle, kill the red skull guy. Go south, the door will open. Use a safety shield to block if you want. Someone needs to stand at 1 and 2 on the minimap and press those console buttons simultaneously. A third person stands at 3 and presses all three consoles. After pressing the first console, you will be rooted, but if you stand right in the middle, you can hit all three without moving. This room will shut down. Grab the coolant rod when you leave. Go east. Kill everything in here with a hit point bar. When the last thing is cleared, there is a control panel you can interact with. Someone grab the coolant rod when you leave. Go northeast. This fight is harder than the final boss. Two things you need to know. Green slimes heal the ooze, so kill the green slimes to prevent the boss healing. Also, when he turns into a shield, like a big dinner plate shape, stop hitting him. If he gets hit with enough attacks while in shield form, he will explode, usually a party wipe. When he's dead, someone press the console. Bring all your coolant rods to the west room. When you step in, it hurts. Holding down the one key speeds you up. Go to the nearest map marker and plug in the rod. Keep doing this until you reach the end and hit all the console buttons at the end. Same trick as earlier, stand in the middle between them and you can do it with one person. 
finally go to the middle of the plant and interact with the console for the final boss, Dr. Manhattan. Similar to Deep Stone, you will have a special action key that stops the floor falling out from under you. If you get hit by the beam, which makes you destroy tiles, don't run around like a maniac and destroy the entire room. Move every two to three seconds and move away from the boss. If you destroy all the tiles around him, the melee can't attack. The floor tiles come back slowly. Kill him to finish the fractal. Twilight Oasis. The way I am going to show you how to do this is how most groups do it. First, we run past all these mobs. Go, 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 go. Fight the mob with the map marker. If your group can't do this, then kill your way there slowly. Once the marked mob is dead, all the mobs chasing you will give up. Once it's dead, go past that mob and follow the right wall to reach High Priestess Amala. Fight her until 75% until- Oh god, you all died. No, it's okay. Praise Joko! With your new zombie legs, you have a super jump special action key. It is also a stun break, so use it if you get in trouble. Run to the west building and jump up, up, up. Across the gap, up one more time, kill the marked mob. Again, use the skill if you get stunned. Once dead, drop down to the east, go to this alcove. You can jump up and land on this little lip, then jump up into the right and land on the wall. One more jump across to this roof, and a final jump up to the marked mob. This will take practice the first time, but will make your future Oasis Fractals super speedy. Kill this person. Afterwards, drop down to the south, follow the undead army to the final boss. First, she's a Mesmer. To find the real one, keep tab targeting until you find the one with the fancy border. Once she gets an interrupt bar, interrupt her and follow the beam she was pointing. Kill the people there. Then, she's an Earth Elementalist. Beat on her until you interrupt, follow beam, kill person again. Air Elementalist, same thing. Necromancer, same thing. You can use the special action key to jump over the fear walls if you need to. And finally, Fire Phase, same thing. Cool story bit at the end between her and Joko, by the way, if you haven't seen it. Captain My Tren Boss. Fight one group of trash, teleport into the final boss fight. Everyone stand near My Tren. Move around her if you get a red circle. She has to hit herself with the fancy red circle to remove her invulnerability. Once it's gone, beat her up. She runs away, kill adds, and beat up Horik. He will shield, and then she will return with her shield. Stay near her again until she blasts herself again. Repeat this entire process until everything is dead. Fastest fractal in the West. Solid Ocean. Step 1. Run past the entire fractal. Go, 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 go! Run past all the stuff all the way until you get to Cthulhu at the end. Kill the jellyfish boys first, they don't respawn. There are two ways to damage Cthulhu killing a tentacle or reflecting his eye beam back at him. To reflect the beam, kill the crystal constructs that look like Diamond Head from Ben 10. Pick up the crystal on the ground when you get a skull marker above your head, and after you get blasted, target the boss and press the 1 key. When things are calm, pick up crystals that are not easy to reach and move them over to where your group is hanging out. Eventually, all five of you will get a skull, everyone pick up a shard, boss blasts himself, fractal ends. Nightmare. Kill trash till you reach the first boss. Red circles are bad. Get in the shield when you see it. Interrupt boss when you see interrupt bars. Next area. Kill trash. Stand in the red circles while playing dodgeball. Eventually you capture the point and it disappears. Note, the blue orbs are a massive heal and remove your agony. It is worth getting hit by a red or two if it also means getting hit by a blue. Following that is the same thing, but there are three circles. I recommend doing the ones on the high ground before you do the one in the middle. After the three circles run up the ramp, once someone makes it up, the attacks cease. Step into the room and back out and wait for the snake to spawn. Interrupt him when he starts his channel. Red areas are bad, green slime pools are also bad. Take the teleporter to the final boss. Click orb to start. Boss tries to enter like the dancer of the Boreal Valley, but fails horribly. Stand in shields, interrupt his break bar, red areas are bad. Twice during the fight, you will have to play dodgeball. There are five circles, one for each of you. However, if any one person gets through this phase alive, it resurrects the entire party. So if you are dead, still be ready to move if your party is finishing the phase. Rinse and repeat the above steps until he's very low health. Around 13%, this acid trip happens. I recommend a top-down camera angle to see the arrows on the ground and dodge the charging mobs. If you got this far, it's usually an easy kill. 
Shattered Observatory. First boss. Red is bad. Fight him until he goes invulnerable, then follow the arrows. Jump from platform to platform, killing the ads. Some of the ads will try to knock you off the platform. You can put your back to the wall or use stability. Eventually, you will get back to the middle. Rinse and repeat. When he summons orbs, just periodically hit the orb to knock it away from the edge of the arena. If you have a ranger, just have the ranger pet attack the orb and it'll keep it out of the fight. Jump into the cutscene. Follow the NPC, take a left turn when she opens the portal, you now have a special action key that is a stun break, a super jump, it does CC damage to enemies. Kill this stuff, jump up. Kill this stuff, a marble will fall. You have to play volleyball with it. Keep moving into the white circles to keep it airborne. A few people will need to leap onto the higher platforms with their special action. Once you've kept the marble in the air long enough, it will open a gate to the next area. Once on the next platform, you can immediately turn right and use your special jump on the boulder to leap up there. Kill this thing. For the next jump, spacebar jump normally into the air, then special action jump after. For this boss, kill any adds you see first. They hurt. If you get a skull on your head, run to the small bubble to contain the explosion. If you don't, you kill everyone. People who don't have the skull on their head need to stay out of that bubble. When she splits, use crowd control, remember the special action key is CC also, to kill the copies. When she summons the marble, someone needs to dedicate themselves to bouncing it. Every time the marble hits you, your special action key will reset, so you can use it between every single marble bounce. Eventually, you will hit the marble back to her and stun her. Be ready to dodge roll when she disappears and reappears. Rinse and repeat these steps to defeat her. Follow the path and NPC to the final boss. When he summons the orbs that tether to people, those people need to run to the pillars and drag orbs with them. Usually people go clockwise. Don't hit the orbs if those people don't need your help. If they do need your help, you can hit them to knock them away from you. Destroy all pillars. Look away from boss when he has this eye above his head. If you accidentally get CC'd, use your special action key to break it. Red circles are bad. If you get a skull on your head, run to the containment bubble again, just like on Marble Girl. Repeat the above mechanics until he disappears and summons adds. Kill the small adds first. When you kill the big ad, it starts the next phase with the small ads still standing there. You will recognize the adds from other fractals. On higher difficulties, sections of the floor will also drop out from under you, but this will not happen on tier one. Repeat until he is defeated. And that is every tier one fractal. On the higher tiers, you will largely see the same mechanics, but stepped up a notch. More red circles, more ads, more control consoles, Bob pushing you off the cliff with social awkwardness, etc. Now, I did not go over group compositions. In tier one, almost any group of five people will be fine. Or challenge modes. This guide is meant to show people how to get started. Now, use that group finder, find some other noobs, and battle cry your way to some ascended gear. If you have any tips to share with others on getting started in fractals, please put them in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe if you'd like to see more content. A special thank you to my newest Patreon supporters who help fund these videos. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment for me and then ask me live any evening on Twitch after 9pm EST, follow to be notified when I'm live, or mail me in-game at muckluck.com. 9082 if you wish to do so. That's all for today. Happy fractaling!